Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the first Hillstone webinar of 2022. I'm Gary Wang, Product Marketing Manager here at Hillstone Networks, and I am joined today by Li Chun, Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Hillstone Networks. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. During the presentation, you're invited to type any questions you may have in the Q&A box. All of the questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation during the Q&A section. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and a link will be shared with all participants after the webinar has ended. And now let's get going. We often say Hillstone products allow users to see, understand, and act, resulting in what we call security that works. Today, we unveil Stone OS 5.5 R9, the foundation behind many of Hillstone's products. It is, as we like to say, the security foundation that works. We'll begin the webinar by discussing pain points we found through research and feedback, then explain the vision behind creating Stone OS 5.5 R9. Then we'll discuss the six new key types of features and updates we've added in this iteration of Stone OS. Finally, Li Chun will perform a live demo of key applicable features. Let's begin by discussing the background of Stone OS and the pain points it aims to help solve. At a glance, Stone OS 5.5 R9 brings plenty of updates to the table from countless VPN, stability, user experience, threat detection, software architecture optimization, and other types of optimizations. Ultimately, Stone OS will be able to produce a comprehensive intelligent security operation system that functions the way we want it to. A list of models that will benefit from this Stone OS iteration can be found at the bottom of this slide. As the cybersecurity climate continues to change drastically and rapidly, the, count, the cat and mouse game will only continue. <laughs> While known threats can be stopped via signature databases, the looming concern are still the unknown threats. New intelligent technology is allowing us to halt these threats through behavior detection and classification of threats by families. To stay on top of this cat and mouse game, properly leveraging AI and machine learning technologies in creative manners looks to be the key in winning this battle. In order for security solutions to continue being reliable, users are expecting no hindrance on business continuity. And on a more simple basis, users are just expecting hard, hardware acceleration, augmented throughput, and as Thor says, more power, rabbit. Well, in this case, users are Thor and we're the cute fluffy rabbit. Yes, there are often products that claim to be standalones and there are one size fit all solutions, but those solutions are oftentimes not the easiest to implement, either because of, of cost concerns or education concerns or efficiency concerns. Take for example, ZTNA, great concept, great products, but it can be difficult at times to instantly transform a business because of the need for re-education and the legacy structures that are standing and high costs. Instead, the more cost-efficient and education-efficient means of upgrading is perhaps found through two types of solutions. One, the solution that can integrate other third-party products, or two, a solution that is also able to leverage the maximum capabilities of your current existing infrastructure. Now, of course, you can always be an overachiever by having a solution that is capable of handling both asks. When it comes to solution type two, which is the solution that is able to leverage the maximum capabilities of your current existing infrastructure, this can be important because just because you have something new doesn't mean you have to throw out everything old. For example, if I got a great new pair of basketball shoes, I might not want to throw out all my old shoes, including my Kobe collectibles. Back to the main point, to be comprehensive, 
integrable products are the name of the game right now. And it is key when looking to provide the all encompassing solution. Based on the feedback and research we've received, it is our job to fill the gaps and meet the clients halfway, in addition to gradually transitioning them into the technologies of the future. On top of that, one other typical ask of comprehensive solutions is the ability to fill the gaps. Many users have niche needs that may not be covered by other more general products. That's where we step in as a visionary. We'll produce the technology and attack these challenges with an innovative mindset that will ultimately create a granular and comprehensive set of capabilities. Now that we've just discussed a little bit of the background involving the creation of Stone OS, with the flourish comes a big reveal of the security foundation that works, Stone OS 5.5 R9. We've leveraged the idea of intelligence in, in a multitude of its capabilities, from operations and management to IPsec smart configuration and continuously enhancing our award-winning unknown threat detection and prevention capabilities. Allowing our product to learn from intelligent data sets will help keep us ahead of looming threats, both known and unknown. Being the security foundation that works, Stone OS 5.5 R9 boasts unprecedented reliability via major hardware acceleration, support for the new reality that is the hybrid workforce, and an assurance of business continuity. Finally, with close to 300 major and minor features, Stone OS is comprehensive, both in terms of meeting clients halfway and in terms of being open for integration with other third-party products. This updated version of Stone OS has close to 300 major and minor new features and enhancements. So to simplify it, the six new key genre of features are the enhanced intelligent detection and prevention via ML and AL technology to help users stay ahead of known and unknown threats, refined secure access for remote workforce with extended VPN capability to tackle changes in the status quo of the workforce, elevated traffic decryption and encryption performance through hardware acceleration, automated configuration for improved visibility in the operations and management process, augmented third-party integration capability, and an improvement in system robustness and availability. Now that sure is a mouthful. Don't worry, we'll break it down. As mentioned earlier, AI and machine learning technologies are the present and the future of the cybersecurity industry. Many breakthroughs are linked to AI, machine learning, or even both. We've taken two of the many features of Stone OS 5.5 R9 that are related. First is Stone OS's ability to leverage machine learning to detect and prevent domain-generated algorithms. Before talking about DGA, let's chat briefly about botnet CNC which is often guilty of leveraging DGAs. By connecting a compromised host to a command and control center, which is where the term botnet CNC comes from, malicious actors can control the compromised hosts and carry out malicious attacks, such as denial of service attacks or stealing sensitive data. If the names and IP addresses of CNC servers are discovered, defenders can shut down botnet CNC. To counteract this, malicious actors develop DGA, which will create a plethora of domain names and IP addresses for the CNC server, effectively masking it within a fog of confusion. You can think of it as if someone throws one ball at you and you just need to catch it, it'll be no problem, as long as you have some athletic ability. Now, imagine if someone throws hundreds of balls at you and you need to catch one. That's going to be tough. A defender will have to take time to figure out which one is a real domain name and IP address, whereas the malware in the CNC can still continue to communicate because it knows which one is the updated domain name and IP address that is being used. The good news, though, is that no matter how quickly domain names and IP addresses are created to mask the CNC server, 
there is always going to be a pattern depending on the malware family and type. This is where ML enhanced solutions come into play. We feed data sets live into the engine to learn how to detect certain DGAs so that it can continue to learn and be updated. The second example of our AI and ML enhancements is our expanded cloud sandbox. When files are executed in sandbox, that allows for detection of unknown threats. And this is something Hillstone has always been ahead of the curve on, due to us having leveraged the use of AI and machine learning technology since the early 2010s. Now our cloud sandbox is available with the X-Series chassis-based data center firewall. Additionally, our cloud sandbox is able to run a larger variety of file types, namely ELF. ELF files are very easily integrated which is why they are popular across different hardware platforms and different operational systems. Our customers were looking to have better coverage in Linux, which is why we have chosen to include ELF to be executable in the cloud sandbox. The next key feature we want to discuss is the extra attention we've placed on extending our VPN capability to augment secure access for the remote workforce. With hybrid work becoming the status quo, there is still plenty of enterprises looking to secure the remote workforce, since that style of work is now here to stay. We've enabled our VPN services to be even more comprehensive, covering even minute use case scenarios, such as leveraging the layer two tunneling protocol with network address translation to enable remote access. L2TP is actually still quite popular, due to it being easily manageable and configurable. Point is, we've been listening and we hear your requests, even the particular and detailed ones, which is why we have close to 300 new features in this iteration of Stone OS. Next, let's talk about the IPsec VPN configuration wizard, which is a game changer in terms of operations and management of the VPN. When entering VPN configurations, it is easy for typos to occur left and right. However, with the configuration wizard, checks and balances occur during the process, along with the presence of user-friendly tools to help ensure your VPN configuration process can be painless. This upgrade closely follows the statement we abide by. We make security that works. Finally, with hardware acceleration, the performance of IPsec VPN is now elevated and can be considered a cost-effective solution to handle the inevitable increasing traffic from remote workforces, now that it is a phenomenon here to stay. Upon mentioning a bit about hardware acceleration, let's get into the heart of hardware acceleration benefits, which can be found through our SSL proxy operations. With hardware acceleration, the SSL proxy now increases its proxy throughput significantly, helping with decrypting even the heaviest of traffic flows. Additionally, by popular demand and fitting the mantra for security that works, instead of security that is a metaphorical thorn in the side of other operations despite its benefits, our SSL proxy now has a whitelist capability. When using an SSL proxy, it satisfies requests from a security perspective, but this may occasionally interfere with the business reality which is that some business applications and services should not be run through the proxy. This feature enables the creation of a whitelist for some applications and services to not have to pass through the pop proxy, ensuring seamless business flow and operations. Through many webinars, I have been uttering the same phrase, a tool is only as strong as its wielders. Even when products are efficient at generating logs and flagging abnormal activities, the more important question is, is it easy to configure policies and is it easy to manage them? Research has shown that many users are suffering from confusion in the operations and management of security products. While keeping this in mind, Stone OS 5.5 R9 was created with major enhancements in the policy management and operations portion. To start us off, Stone OS 5.5 R9 introduces the feature of mini policies. 
This new feature helps create a system that is more malleable and more able to adapt to different changes quickly and efficiently, adjusting for the reality of the cybersecurity environment we work in. As our CTO, Tim, put brilliantly during the 2021 year-end webinar, gone are the days that we erect a security infrastructure and wait. Now, we have to assume that our infrastructure has been breached, meaning we must instead focus on an ability to react quickly. Similar to the idea of our products and solutions being application aware and context aware, we would like our policy assistant to be able to provide policy generation intelligently. This way, it will actually be able to help out with policy o &M. An example of how the policy assistant could theoretically, theoretically work is, let's say we're trying to change our current policy to allow certain access to Facebook by a specific group of end users rather than all the users in the organization. The policy assistant can automatically detect the new flow of Facebook and from there can edit the source IP range in the policy accordingly. Finally, when configurations need to be adjusted, users find it helpful to know where the configuration has come from and what was its original intent. This helps to understand what types of adjustments may be needed. <clears throat> We've taken this to heart and have allowed more opportunities for these policy configurations to store metadata, such as version number of the configuration, why the configuration was created, etc. By collecting more data during the policy configuration process, better visibility can be achieved, leading to a more thorough understanding, which leads to a more informed action that'll be taken. If you didn't keep up with that reference, I'm talking about how this policy auditing process allows us to better see, understand, and act. Moving on to the fifth type of key feature Stone OS 5.5 R9 brings to the table. The openness for external service support and third party integration. Users are looking to avoid vendor lock in, and they are looking for solutions that can help lower TCO while maintaining maximum efficiency of the current set of existing security solutions. To satisfy these two requests, we've been working on creating a solution that'll A, support more of the currently standing security infrastructures of enterprises, and B, provide a more flexible solution for users by including more open third-party integration capabilities. One of the examples of Stone OS's increased openness can be seen via the new support management for NetConf. NetConf is an API meant to be leveraged for the installation, manipulation, and deletion of network devices configurations. In a world that is big, on the setting of software divine networking, NetConf is incredibly helpful. As such, the latest Stone OS now supports configuration and management over NetConf by third party SDN controllers. The configuration of address book members, such as lists of IP addresses or fully qualified domain names, was once a manual configuration process but it is now able to be imported via files or external feeds over FTP or TFTP. This helps make for a more streamlined experience during operations and management. Finally, since we're looking at a globalized economy and business processes running 24 seven, business continuity is incredibly important. Ideally, solutions erected can support this idea of continuity and the solution itself is able to run smoothly without much reboot time or system downtime. We have many examples of this found in Stone OS, <laughs> starting with hotfix support being available on next-gen firewalls. As we just mentioned, a globalized economy means there is an increased interest in the need for high availability when it comes to critical business assets. To explain why hotfixes can be so important, let me input a layman comparison. Imagine you have a student who is heading out to a tennis tournament. You can prep the student and do all the necessary drills, then send the student off to the tournament. After going through trials and tribulations at the tournament, the student will come back home with newfound knowledge. 
you and your student will go through a reboot of sorts and figure out what to adjust for the next time. Now, imagine you were the coach and you were able to attend the tournament live with your student. And in this scenario, let's say you were allowed to give recommendations and adjustments to your student on the fly, in between games, during breaks. That'll be more effective if the ultimate goal is to attain results from the tournament. This is similar to the hotfix. Prior to this new feature being available, users needed a slight reboot or some sort of slight downtime in order to implement patches and fixes on the next-gen variable. That will no longer be the case moving forward. Another example has to do with the security control modules in our X-Series chassis-based firewall. Traditionally, the active SEM will perform an unnecessary reboot when it is of high memory usage, since the heartbeat between the other module card and itself can be lost. With Stone OS 5.5 R9, we now have two SEMs, an active one and a passive one. When the SEM memory is full, it will now instead fail over from the active module to the passive module so that there is no more system downtime. The reality is having high availability is critical when protecting your extremely valuable on-premise data centers. Next, traditionally, signature database downloads were not always going to be available from the get-go because the reality is internet connectivity is not always perfect especially with regards to where, depending on where you are in the world. As a result, in an attempt to help make sure we're taking care of users all across the globe, including more remote locations with more spotty connection to the internet, we're supporting flexible download capabilities as it will allow for much easier operations and management. By readily having access to upgrades and updates, erected infrastructures can be more malleable and adjust to changes as they come. In addition to creating a sense of high availability in various sectors, we have also expanded the support of our high availability solutions. For example, our high availability peer mode, which is used in asymmetric routing scenarios, now possesses IPv6 support. IPv6 compatibility is important because as we all know, we have long run out of IPv4 addresses. Seeing that IPv6 is the future, we're staying true to our Gartner classification as a visionary, always trying to stay ahead of the game. Now that just about wraps up the key features and genre of key features I'd like to bring to the audience's attention today. There's still countless neat features in Stone OS 5.5 R9. It truly is a comprehensive update that'll be sure to cover your needs. And if it seems like it isn't, there's bound to be an integration available to help suit your needs. That's why we're confident in saying Stone OS is the security foundation that works. After this discussion of the key features, I'd like to pass it off to Li Chun, Senior Technical Marketing Manager, for a live demo of some of Stone OS 5.5 R9's key features. All right, Li Chun, take it away. OK, uh, great. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, can you see a screen? Yeah, I can see it. Great, cool. So uh, I'll start with the uh, first feature is the sandbox. So uh, as Gary introduced, uh, sandbox, uh, our cloud-based sandbox uh, leveraged machine learning capability uh, to detect uh, those unknown threats. So uh, we add additional uh, file support uh, on the cloud sandbox, which will address not only, you can see uh, previously most of the uh, file format are Linux, uh, sorry, our Windows operating system based. Right now we have the uh, scripts and ERF, which especially for the ERF, we extended the capability to uh, all the Linux based hosts. And uh, uh, next uh, I will show you is the uh, policy. So uh, here we have a uh, uh, policy assistant capability uh, as Gary introduced uh, that uh, we can generate uh, 
uh, uh, the policy based on the application. Right now, I have uh, preloaded some uh, traffic that uh, has been detected by one of our policy, uh, whose policy ID is 286 and allows all the traffic from uh, the source uh, from, from any zone to, 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 from any to any. And actually you can see we detect a traffic uh, with a specific application of Google based, uh, sorry, Google based. And then next you can uh, uh, select the application based generation mode. So uh, at the next step, uh, you can choose uh, either replace the uh, source IP address to a range of uh, uh, IP, uh, IPs. So uh, the source IP address could be, uh, you know, a, a specific type of uh, address that uh, you would like to have the, uh, the audience to, uh, to have the access. I mean, uh, right now only the source address uh, these IP address can have the access, but uh, you can definitely expand this policy to a range of IP that uh, allow the, this range of IP to have the access. Or alternatively, you can choose block to block specific range of IP to have the access. So this helps you to detect uh, a specific application and then you can assign uh, corresponding policies based on the traffic that we detected. Uh, next is the mini policy. So uh, comparing to a uh, full policy, uh, which, which you can define here, uh, the mini policy only left uh, five uh, key components, uh, which is the source zone, source address, destination zone, and the destination address, additional with the uh, prototype and action, uh, action, either permit or deny for a really you know, straightforward and uh, uh, simple uh, policy definition. So you can easily add it, either add or delete uh, this policy uh, as you want. And uh, uh, next is the uh, PTF uh, about the IP address uh, blacklist. So uh, here you can see that uh, uh, we can add those IP address manually and also you can uh, import uh, the uh, IP address uh, block list uh, from a file, external file, which allow you to, you know, uh, automatically uh, update those ports either by incremental or totally overwrite the uh, IP address, uh, sorry, IP blacklist. And uh, you may also, configure a uh, address that allow you to auto update this, uh, uh, this uh, blacklist library. And uh, uh, next, as we mentioned about the SSL proxy, uh, I will show here that we add a additional, one moment. Uh, so for the SSL proxy, uh, you can uh, define the, uh, the uh, specific domains for those uh, that you would like to add to white list. And also you can, uh, we, uh, we have some predefined domain, but of course you can uh, customize your own. And we, uh, you can also add the uh, IP address to the white list. Uh, last but not the least, uh, we have a optimization about the IPsec uh, VPN configuration. So uh, here is the uh, uh, updated uh, VPN uh, IPsec VPN com uh, configuration guide. So uh, as you can see, we uh, not only show all the uh, configured uh, IPsec uh, tunnels here, but you can also monitor those uh, uh, IPsec uh, configuration uh, for, for the daily operation. And uh, I will show you the uh, configuration wizard. So uh, right now we combine the peer configuration as well as the tunnel configuration into one page. Here you can choose uh, 
uh, manually choose the uh, which peer you would like to connect. But also you can uh, copy the peer or edit the peer uh, in the drop uh, drop down list, uh, which allow you to simply uh, simply uh, create additional uh, peers uh, with similar configuration. And uh, are similarly uh, for the uh, uh, phase two proposal, uh, there is a uh, long list of drop down list that you can choose from, and uh, you can simply edit those uh, 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 proposals uh, as you want. And you can, uh, of course, you can manually add those uh, uh, ciphers in uh, the the uh, the hash uh, algorithm you would like to use for those uh, phase two proposals. So uh, it, it is more straightforward and allow you to simply uh, edit uh, and choose your, uh, configure your own IPsec VPN configurations. All right, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think that's all for my presentation.